the third armored division of the United States, part of NATO in Warno. Here we go, it's our first NATO nation. Let's have a look at all the units in the game so far for this division. Right, so what we got straight up from the get-go of the M35 supply, 30 points, 800 supply itself. Not bad, not bad at all. A few vehicles here for the uh, logistics on the ground, which is pretty good. Got the M113A2 supply, 500 uh, supply in this for 20 points. Yeah, you pretty much have a similar one in comparison to the Soviet version, which is the MT uh, munitions vehicle. The Hemt, or HEMTT, uh, 2,500 supply. That's really good. Uh, 80 points. You have the, I think the Eastern German comparison to this, which is like 1,700 supplies. That's a real, uh, that's a lot of supply there for this vehicle. That's really good. It's 80 points as well. Phenomenal. Love it. Definitely something I'll add in my deck. Uh, U860A supply. 1,500. That's not even that bad as well for 60 points as well for a helicopter. Um, it's pretty useful actually. It's pretty good. Got the M151 uh, Mutt Command Vehicle. It's pretty cool. Old school, this, isn't it? Love that Willys Jeep. Pretty badass. 108 Commodore Scout. It's just your standard CV vehicle to get around the battlefield. M577 CPC Command Vehicle. We've got a bit more arm on this one, so maybe it's a bit better. I would personally choose this uh, over the, the Mutt. But then again, you do get one extra Mutt in the, that card, so it's probably best to go for that. Maybe it's up to you. Hang on, play. Um, it's a little bit faster. And you've got U860 CD, or CO, sorry, Command Helicopter. Both are two medium machine guns, so that's actually not a bad bit of kit. You could probably land that somewhere, and if there's infantry moving onto it, you can lift it off and actually engage those contacts whilst you're pulling away. So, not bad, actually. 120 points. Pretty good. The um, only problem is you can't obviously hide it in trees. It's going to be out in the open. Um, but depending on what the uh, command sector is, you could probably use this at the back of the map, potentially. And they quickly move around as well. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Right, next, moving on to infantry. What do we actually have here for the ground guys, ground pounders? So first off, first off we have the military police. Only 15 points. Pretty cheap. Uh, get an assault rifle and a medium machine gun. Can equip them with an M151 Jeep. Um, I guess he's all right. Really, really cheap units. I'm guessing just, just filling gaps to engage infantry and tree lines and stuff like that. So for the price they are, it's not bad. It's just like a gap filler, um, just more firepower. Supposed to support other units such as the fire teams and whatnot, and the rifles units. Military police and the M67. These ones are probably purchased over the military police, but um, but depends where you can use them. Like I said, these are probably good setting up inside towns and your defensive positions. These are not really best for using for assaulting, um, but I'd use these primary for defense. Uh, 35 points, not bad at all. You can bump that up and put the uh, accuracy up as well. So it's pretty cool. Engineers LDR, just another command unit. Kind of a come kind of a not bad vehicle we can equip it with, uh, but not the best command units I've seen. To be honest, most other w uh, Red Four units actually have two weapon systems, even assault rifle and a uh, AT. So that kind of sucks a little bit that they're that. But I guess this good thing is they're small, so they should be able to hide hide well potentially. Next with engineers with the M60 machine gun, 800 rounds, nice satchel charge as well. It's pretty good. Still get to use these guys, um, but I'm pretty sure. This, if it gets on top of a target, we'll be able to destroy most vehicles. But we'll have a, have a look um, and try and utilize these soon in the future. Next, we're Engineers Flash and Napalm Incendiary Rocket Launcher. That's pretty cool. Love the uh, M202 Flash. If you've seen the film Commando, absolutely love it. Arnold Schwarzenegger is awesome. Um, I'm surprised I actually use this thing, but it's pretty cool. But it's absolutely ruthless in real life. Um, and you can quit that with the M13 and the M35 as well. Then the engineers, the M47 Dragon, um, point for tree. Not the best stats, but it's got not bad range, but it actually is pretty poor. And um, they've got six rounds as well. So, but it's a unit that can be utilized and put around the battlefield because they're quite cheap. So, you can put the axi up with the if you put them up to level three. So, it's not bad. Right now, the actual units themselves, the mechanized rifles, this is the command version of it. Mechanized rifle leader, I suppose that means. Um, got X and quality, which is interesting. Uh, they've got both the M60 and the M62 Law, so they can defend themselves pretty well, and there's nine of them as well. So that's quite a good command unit, to be honest, quite frankly. Um, 145 points kind of reflect that in the stats, so that makes sense. Next are the mechanized rifles with the M47 Dragon and an M249 Saw, light support weapon. You put those stats up, that's a pretty pretty good unit, actually. I think it's one of the best. It's X and mechanized rifles, yeah. And you've got 11 men there. So these are probably your best infantry units in this division. Fire team law with an M2A2 Bradley infantry fighting vehicle. 
can you have that the recognized rifles? No, you can't. So a fire team, you can have a Bradley. Um, that combination is quite deadly, actually. Uh, let's have actually have a look at how, much, how many guys there's. There's only five guys. Um, but that is a pretty badass. If that M2A2 Bradley could go with the mechanized rifles, that'd be even better. But I haven't given you that option, which kind of sucks. I've printed, I think they know it's in of OP, but I guess they could just bump the price up, couldn't they, really? Add another add another little tab here and just say mechanized rifles to the Bradley. And then, you know, that'd be pretty useful and just bump the price up to, like, I don't know, something stupid. Whatever it's going to be, 140 points or whatever. But a good combination. Um, yeah, nice, nice units there, actually. Just because they have that Bradley with it as well. Fireteam Dragon with the light support weapon M249 and M47 Dragon. Good penetration this one. Bump that up. That's not a bad bit of unit actually. Having these combined, that's a pretty pretty good unit. So look how many men there is there. Six men in this fire team. How much that actually costs? I was to equip that sort of thing. 110 points. Yeah, expensive but good. Next are the Aero Rifles. 10 10 man strength in this section. Um. The M60 as well, M72 law. But you can equip this with a UH60 Blackhawk. That's cool, they're giving me an option in this deck to use an airborne unit. Air, it's kind of like air rifles, or air cav, I suppose, to a certain extent. Um, nice of giving that option in the third armor division. Because obviously, in previous games, it's all just ground stuff, but they've actually given you a little bit of an option there to potentially use some sort of helicopters. Because, you know, you could get, these sort of units could get attached to armor divisions potentially. Or you could just want to use a helicopter to get men out there. Right, next, we've got the tow launcher. Nice, the Ito Salcos times 6. Penetration's 20, 2625 range. And we've got the tow 2. 25 penetration. That's any tank that hits, that's dead instantly. 65% um, accuracy. If I bump that up, 81% accuracy. Yeah, that is that is quality. Quality stuff. And you can only buy a 1. But yeah, that's, that's something you probably want to buy. Probably get at least rank 2, maybe 74%. Depends really. But that, nice. Probably one of the best anti tank weapon systems I've seen, to be honest, because those stats are phenomenal. 2625 range, 25 penetration, 81% actually. Really good. Right, moving on to the artillery page. First of all, we have the M30 107mm mortar. Seeing these fill, uh, or a different variant in the Warsaw Pact, um, but they're really good to be used. Uh, supporting infantry and defending sort of uh, positions of avenues where enemy movement may happen so it's always good to have these um, if you're going to assault a position as well i would advise having at least some sort of artillery piece mortars are best because they're quick at firing as you can see aiming time is 10 seconds where these are probably like 30 um, to get smoke on a position and bombard it and then push your men through so it's always good to have those tactics if you're playing this game uh m10 60a2 mortar once again it's just pretty much the m30s but on a kind of m113 platform so i can get around about for a little bit quicker out of these two personally i would prefer purchasing this platform here the m6 or m30 or the m10 60a2 um because moving these guys once they fired it takes a little while for them to move around but firing these and moving these mortar vehicles is a lot quicker um so it's all about counter battery um because in battle especially when we're getting a dragon you, you notice some people are going to sit back and watch wait for your fire and then engage your positions and uh, with their artillery, fire back, count artillery. So you've got to pay that, bear in mind. When you're firing artillery, move it. Um, it's like any any situations that infantry, uh, infantry soldier knows. Um, when you fire a rifle, change position. Don't constantly fire from the same position. Otherwise, eventually, someone's going to zero on, in on you and take you out. So it works away with artillery as well. Move once you fire. Um, nice, good stats there. Not too bad as well. 6,700 meters, which is pretty much the same as the M30. More. Here we go, the M1092 Paladin. Awitza, self propelled artillery, nice. To 21,000 range, it reflects the expense of how expensive this thing is, but it is good. Heavy machine gun as well, actually, that gives you an option to potentially fight off infantry and reverse out if they do sneak up on you, such as a recon unit and whatnot. Quite expensive supply cost, but you look at the aiming time, 26 seconds, takes quite a while. Next, we the M270 MLRS cluster rounds. Good range, 42,000, got 12 of them as well, 12 rounds, that's, that's badass. And the penetration is 6. That's really good. Not a bad aim time as well. 28, six, 28 seconds. Takes quite a while to reload though. So it takes 2 minutes to reload. Which is a bit frustrating. But nonetheless, it's good. It's got a uh, other option of cluster rounds as well. Um, and then you got the high explosive version as well. Another 12 rounds in that. Um, pretty much the exact same stats. Reloading time is a little bit short actually. It's just over a minute. So that's not too bad. A minute and 20 seconds. 
and it's excellent quality as well. Nice, really good range. Having these combined is really good. Um, that's a lot more expensive than the cluster round, actually, which is quite interesting. Um, having these work together, I would say, personally, out of these ones, I would go for a cluster and this, the MRI high explosive M27, M270, and then go for a mortar. And then, depending on what you want to do, I would go for a self propelled artillery piece potentially, but it depends on your tactics and how you play the game. You might even just want two uh, M270s and a mortar round would be useful. But if you like to uh, use artillery a lot, I would go for the Paladin as well, because it's really good, really accurate, and really high expression. Suppress suppression rate, sorry. Next, tanks, tank tree. Okay, this is what it's all about in this armor division. It's not as much tanks I thought it was going to be compared to other divisions. Um, but let's have a look. We've got an M901 ITV, which has got the uh, tow launcher on it. Penetration 20. Nice. 2625 range. 6 accuracy. That's really good. 80 points. That's not bad at all. It's really good. It's up there. You could potentially bump that up even more. 75%. So we we'll look at the M91A3 ITV. Even more better penetration. 25. This is the tow 2 launcher. We've seen that on the infantry version as well a moment ago. Uh, actually, 65%. We bumped that up. That should be got to 80. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Really good bit of kit, that, actually. You get two of them as well. And um, 12 rounds. So that's that's really good. Really good. You're pretty much going to be hitting every single time this thing. And that's an instant kill every single time. Um, which is awesome. Next, an M728 CEV. Small small tank gun, which is probably used mainly against fire infantry. This is more like an infantry uh, support vehicle, I would say, more than anything, than taking on tanks. As you see, it's got high explosive rate. It's not actually... Um, Anti-tank personnel rounds. So, that's pretty cool. The heavy machine gun there, the M2HB and the M240. So, it's got good stuff to take on infantry. So, definitely use this in support. Because it doesn't have, obviously, your armor piercing rounds, as you can see in these ones. Um, here we go. So, the first one is the M1A Rams. Actually, cancel that. The M1A1A Rams. So, 240-point tank. Here we go. What we got? So penetration is 19, not bad armor straight away from the get-go. 17 front. And then some good weapon systems to support that. Good accuracy as well, actually. I bumped up to a higher rate. Look at the accuracy on that. Static, 81%. Let's go for the M1A1 HA Abrams, which is the next price up. Straight away, front armor, 20. Let's go for the highest stats we can get. 81% and 75% on move. Really good stable weapon system that is, actually. Much better than I think than some of the Soviet ones. Um of the M2 and the M240 machine guns as well. So good for supporting infantry as well. And taking out helicopters. Next we have the M1 Abrams CP. This is a command vehicle which is pretty much the same as the M1 Abrams but it's just uh, the command version so the price is bumped well and truly up by 100 points. And last we have the M1 A1 HA Abrams command vehicle which is once again the same as on the right but it's just a command vehicle. Pretty nice though. Love that. Um, love the camera pattern as well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> sort of snow, snow woodland, pretty cool, I like that. Right, the recon. What recon do we have for the third armor division? First off, we have the M981 Fist V. Cool. Um, not bad, cheap, very good optics as well, mediocre stealth. Not bad, a bit of kit, actually. For some reason, it's got a weapon system on there, a tow launcher, but you can't use it, which kind of sucks a little bit. Only a cheap standard vehicle to get around the battlefield. Here's one of the best recon vehicles, probably in the game actually. That and probably the French AMX, I'd probably say two of the best recon infantry fighting vehicles you can get uh, in the game. Um, so look at the stats on here. You've got the auto cannon M242 Bushmaster, which can engage can engage vehicles. Um, it takes a little while to take them out, depending on if it's a tank per se, but if against other infantry fighting vehicles, it's pretty good. It's quite quick. Also combined with a tow launcher of 12 rock, uh, rounds of that, 25 penetration, so it can hit tanks at long range as well. And you've got your medium machine gun. This thing is formidable. It is very versatile. One of the best infantry fighting vehicles in the game. Um, that alongside the B, uh, the BMP-3, I'd say. Um, but formerly one of the best recon units in, in the game, this is. So it's really good. Really good bit of kit. Love it. Love to see it. Right, next got the scouts. So you just, just standard poor recon infantry. Exceptional stealth, that's good. So you can dot these guys about the battlefield. They're quite cheap. Um, dot these guys around the battlefield. You can probably get him with a probably a M2 machine gun on this little Jeep here. Get around the battlefield quite quickly. Or you could potentially equip him with an M113, which has a M40 tank gun, which is pretty cool. 17 penetration as well. Um, or fly around. It's up to you. Totally up down to you, really. Um, but that's pretty cool. Pretty cool units there. 
Got a good selection of recon units here in, in the uh, American version here. It's pretty good for the armor division. Heavy machine gun and a tow launcher here for 40 point recon tank. That's pretty good. Uh, penetration 16. So you're probably looking at taking the majority of vehicles if it hits. Um, if you get bump this up to the highest rate, then you might have a lot more higher chance of hitting, which is really cool. I'd love to see that. That's good. Good bit of kit for the price it is. Very worth Very worth it. <laughs> very worth it. Uh, it's good. Good price to stats, should we say. Ah, oh, M998 Humvee. I don't see many Humvees. You see a lot of the uh, Jeeps at the moment. But I guess the first, it's this week's first, first that come to service to Humvee in the late 70s or early 80s. Um, so we've got here just the LRS. So this is more of your, your top range. I'm guessing it's long, long range. I don't know what probably LRS stands for. Let me know in the comments below if you know what LRS stands for. Um, I think maybe long range service. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Long range scouts maybe potentially. Could be that. Uh, they've got a submachine gun. The Colt Commando. Really nice bit of kit that. Love that weapon system. Where is it? Who's got it on? Oh, that looks like an M4. More like a Colt Commando. This guy looks like it's got a Colt Commando potentially. Um, it's made a magazine that gives away the cult for my ease. It looks like all M4s, to be honest. Uh, which are rather interesting. Uh, with the M249 uh, saw and the M72 law. So they've got a good combination of vehicles. So they actually can go around and take out units. Got exceptional stealth and very good. Not bad units, actually, for what they are. Really good weapon systems. So they're pretty pretty good for hunting units down. So I'll definitely utilize these guys on buying other units. So you first got the OH58C Scout. It's more like a Kia Warrior, which you can see down the end there. That's nice, got a Gatling gun, that's that's useful. Because some recoil helicopters, like the MI2, for example, in the Soviet Warsaw Pact, has no weapon system, so that's good, it can defend itself. And if you see some units that are vulnerable, such as a command unit, you can take them out, which is nice, love to see it. Next, OH-58D, Kia Warrior, air-to-ground rockets. Not bad, actually, 14 rockets as well, 100-point recoil helicopter, exceptional rockets as well. Can take out units on the ground, that's pretty good as well, I'd love to see that. That'd be good to be used, really useful. And then, once again, the OH-58D, Kia Warrior, this one, uh, with the ability to take out ground targets with Hellfire missiles. 24 penetration, really, really good bit of kit. Look at the accuracy of that. If you bump up to two, um, you're looking at 80% accuracy, or 80% accuracy while static, and 57% while motion, on motion, which is fucking good. Um, really good bit of kit, this. Only thing is, there's only four rockets, which is a bit frustrating if they had... Um, Eight, that would be a little bit better, but obviously because of the size of the helicopter itself, you can, you can carry four, really. Um, but it's good. It's really fast as well, so you can get it to and from the back of the field, re resupply it quite quickly, so I think it's good. Really good helicopter. Only thing is, it's quite easy to take out the sky. Um, if these things get engaged by AA, there's no real chance of you bugging them out in time. Once they've locked on, you're pretty much dead. Um, very lucky if you get away. Right, the AA. Let's have a look what we got. We've got Stinger Missiles. Nice. Got the not bad range actually, 2475. Actually, it's pretty good. 50%. It's not bad considering what it is. And six rounds. And it's cheap. It's good to have. M163 Pivads. These are good as well. The only thing is they are radar, so they can get knocked out by seed aircraft. So you've got to bear that in mind. But they are good. They're quite cheap. So you can get quite a few them out on the battlefield quite quickly. Next, we have the Chaparral M48A1. So we've got the MIM-72G infrared missiles, four of them. So these are good because you see can't get you. Uh, they've got not bad range, actually. 3,000 meters in a helicopter. So this is probably the furthest I've seen for uh, uh, AA to take out helicopters, I think. Non-radar guiding anyway. That is really, really good. It looks awesome, this vehicle. I don't know. That's pretty cool. I love the details they put into it. Um, so these are phenomenal against helicopters. I, I personally like to buy these straight from the get-go, like two of these. On my flanks immediately. And it actually is not that bad as well, 50%. Um, what's the fire rate? Aim time takes one second, rate of fire is nine. Uh, reload time is 26. So they can fire them quite quickly. So it's pretty good. And lastly, we have the OH 58C uh, S surface to air missile. So this is has a stinger pod in it, which is pretty cool. Stinger post, four of them. Um, it would be nice if it had more because, you know, the is not bad actually. Uh, but it's get quite close 2,400 meters to a helicopter. Um, and normally people put their helicopters behind the defensive line sometimes and then on the defense line they have AA which has a range of about 2,800 so you've got to bear that in mind. Um, these can be useful from the get-go from the start or sneak around the back or just prevent the helicopters from flanking so but these are good. Next of the helicopters what we got AH-1F Cobra nice 
Love that. Got a good, good variation of weapon systems here. Gatlin, air to ground rockets. 38 rounds in each pod. Well, cancel that. Actually, 15, oh, 19 rockets in each pod. Um, it's pretty cool. Gatlin guns there. Nice. That's a good capability. 510 points. Not bad. Oh, I got the one with the mouth. Huh? That's pretty cool. Dragon mouth. It's badass. Uh, AH1F Tow a Cobra. So this gives you the ability to have a tow launcher as well. Extra 20 points. Out of these two, I would personally go for the tow Cobra because you have the Gatling gun, the air to ground rockets, and the potential of taking out long range uh, targets. Um, so it's not bad at all, actually. But personally, I prefer this next aircraft, the A64A Apache. Awesome bit of kit. I know someone who's an Apache pilot in the British Army and they absolutely love it. Phenomenal job. Um, it's a really cool, pretty really cool job. Been one of these before. Um, learned a lot about these. Pretty awesome. Uh, love these weapon systems. This aircraft, sorry. Um, phenomenal. Really nice. Really nice bit of kit. So we've got here. All the cannon. Air to ground rockets. You have two of those. Quite a lot of rounds there. And it's got some armor here. So it can defend itself. The chance of knocking this out on one hit is very slim. It's probably going to take two rounds. So it gives you time to ev evac this helicopter out of there. Um, before it gets knocked out completely. But it is good. The all cannon is really good as well. Really good at taking out infantry. 864A Apache, so this is your standard Apache here. 260 points, you can see the price jumps massively because of the Hellfire add on to it. So we've got the all cannon, the Hellfire missile, and the air to ground hydro rockets. Um, so this is an all rounder. This is a beast. Alright, this is probably one of the best attack helicopters in the game. Probably I'd say it's a Party M924 um, because just because of the weapon systems and the armor behind it as well. It's quite, it's really quick as well. It's really, really good. Um, so when you do lose in the battlefield, it is a massive loss because they are phenomenal. They can turn tides of battles quite quickly, especially end game. Um, you can take out so much, so much kit. If the enemy doesn't have any air defense, like this thing can can wipe up. It can take out a lot of kit. You see the reload time, aiming time is one second. They, they can get these Hellfire rockets out rapid, so you can engage multiple tanks quite quickly and just clean up a battlefield, which is great. And lastly, the AH-64A Apache ACGM. So this is like the worst nightmare for any armored division who has no air defense. Like this can go in. This combined with a, a recon helicopter is honestly a nightmare. Um, 16 Hellfire rockets. It can just go in and sweep up everything. You're looking at probably easy take out eight to nine vehicles quite quickly. This thing, and that's high end vehicles. You're talking like top end tier tanks. Um, so nine men plus they can get close with all cannon and take out infantry as well. So good combination. Um, combining this, the A sixty four A Apache, with the HGM Apache, and then a recon and maybe even the AA helicopter. Those four, a combination can sweep a battlefield quite quickly, and they can defend themselves against a uh, a defense. Uh, not a defense, but air spirit fires. Sorry, and other helicopters. If need be, if you have that, the, the AA helicopter with you. Um, but if you have enemy has AA, then you might be a little bit in trouble. But good combination. Probably one of the best helicopters in the game is this bit. This bad boy right here. Of course it was the Apache. It had to be, didn't it? Lastly, we have the aircraft. The third armor division. So first and foremost, we have the F4E Phantom AA. Not bad at stats, actually. It's pretty good. Actually 50% there for the Sparrow. But not bad, considering. Uh... High explosive version there, so it also has an air to air missile for 106 points. That's pretty good. That's actually really good pricing for, for this aircraft. The MK82 227 kilogram bomb. Nice. Cluster rounds. Pretty much the same again. Same platform, just for the cluster. Penetration's nine. Really nice bit of kit. Two rockets though. Not the biggest payload, but it is good if it's accurate if it gets on the target. We want to go for a little bit more accurate because sometimes cluster rounds do fly off and do their own thing. And then napalm. Times two as well. Only things about these, because they're not specifically just for, they're not just bombers. They're literally uh, sort of multi raw aircraft because they've got the air to air missiles. Haven't got many many bombs there, which sucks a little bit. Um, but still, good for the price they're asking for. It's good. Next, we the A10A, high explosive. So, you can actually drop a bomb with this one. I never know. They, I didn't really realize you can get the high explosive one, but it got eight times 227 kilogram bombs. Um, personally, I wouldn't even use this that often. I, I don't know how many times I'd select this over the other aircraft. Um, because of the speed of it, um, it's really slow. But again, that could be to its advantage because it's got armor, so it could defend itself and get out. Um, I might have to use it and test it sometime, see what it's actually like. But primarily, I'd like to use the A10 Thunderbolt AT 
four time Maverick missiles, um, and also has an air to air missile here, which uh, maybe in a different division might have more uh, Mavericks assigned to it, but four rockets, 26 penetration, probably one of the highest penetrations you can get in the game. Um, Rigor accuracy as well, so we bump this up a little bit. 57%, not bad. Um, but if that hits, it's pretty much instant kill. Goodbye. And also got the Gatling gun as well, which does penetration in itself. So not only have the Maverick misses, misses incoming with that Gatling gun and potentially take out tanks with that. So really good bit of kit. Love that. Love the A10. Infamous burt noise. Everyone knows it. The F111, the E high explosives. So this is what I'm talking about with regards to bombers. They've got MK82 bombs at 12 of them this time. And it's a lot faster and very good agility. Uh, cluster version with eight clusters, same aircraft. And Napalm with times by four. Um, so not as many as four. I thought it would be more rockets, Napalm rounds, but... Uh, Napalm bombs, sorry, but... And there's a few more. But still, nice. F4G Wild Wheel Seed. So this is your surface to air. Or air to surface, sorry. I keep, we always can confuse them. Or anti-radiation missile. Or air to surface missile. Um, it's pretty cool. Penetration 20, so it can take out... Actually, it's not the greatest. I want to probably bump that up. I'd probably only have one of these... Uh, or two max. Uh, but they have five. Five missiles. I just noticed that. Wow. Okay. So <laughs> I wouldn't have bumped that because of obviously you don't want some seed aircraft only have like one or two missiles, but this has five. Um, so that's phenomenal. It's 57%. If that takes, if it hits each time, you've got 57% chance of hitting, and you can take out potentially five AA aircraft if they're still on. Um, AA uh, missile launchers or guns out on the ground. Pretty cool. And then finally, the F 15C Eagle. The Gatling gun, Edward missile, Edward missile there. Nice, good stats there. Looks really good as well. Look at that, the wolf hounds on the side. Love to see it. That's awesome. All right, I think that is the third armor division covered. Um, some really nice kit in that. I really look forward to using the deck in game at some point. Um, once we actually create that, we'll probably do an episode about creating a deck for each division as well and playing each division. So that's gonna be pretty interesting. Um, yeah, so some really nice kit there. Really different in comparison to. Uh, the Soviet and Warsaw Pact stuff. Um, but I love it. Love the models. Everything looks phenomenal in this game. Like It looks really, really good. And even when you're playing it, this is great. Um, right, so I'll see you next one. We should be going over another division. Probably, uh, I think, Olympic division. So I'll see you then. See you next one.